this is the start of our next vlog. So I'm going to travel to Hanover in a Karoo. It's quite a distance, about 600 kilometers. And that will be my next vlog. It's a small town. And I like the small town vibes, finding stuff in small towns. So we're going to check that out. For the people who came here now, just now, the first time you come here, I'm doing a vlog about vlogs about towns. I visit towns and events, maybe, and I just report on it and I uh, review towns and what's happening in towns and stuff. And for those who subscribed recently and who watched, the channel is slowly growing finally, and uh, thank you very much. So, the plan is because you have to have a plan. The plan is to become a YouTube millionaire, obviously. So, I walked to the Indian market this morning. It's a beautiful day, the sun is shining. And I stood in front of a rack of incense and I was looking through it. And I got this incense. It's incense for business success. There's a plane on here, a private jet, a fancy car. People are looking successful. Money. So I'm going to burn this incense. And uh, you can help me to become a YouTube millionaire by liking and subscribing and supporting this channel. And when I see you in a bar in a small town, I'm going to buy you a drink. Good morning, it's time for the next adventure. I have about a two kilometer walk for my stuff to work in hitchhike. It's a foggy morning. How do I feel? Didn't sleep well, I'm very anxious. I'm a bit terrified because I have a long way to go today, over 600 kilometers to hitchhike to get to Hanover and I am scared shitless. Um, and also it's a tough start, long walk of a lot of stuff. But I'm also excited, I mean it's the next adventure. Um, I'm very happy that I got a little room to live in in Harry Smith for while I um, edited all the previous vlogs. And uh, yeah, now it's the next place. So eventually the plan is at some point, hopefully, I can get a second old second hand car. I don't mind if it's a bit beat up as long as the engine is good and the gearbox is good. Take care of the seats, put a mattress in. Then I have transport and a place to stay because this is not sustainable. This will wear me out quickly, this type of travel. But hopefully we'll get there at some point. But for now, let's just get this day started. Once you get started, usually the fear starts to dissipate. And you just take it step by step and you, and you just go. And you just get it done. So let's see what a day holds. Start walking, we go and wait, and uh, the same guy, but in another car that got me a lift in a bucky last time from outside of Harry Smith, he's giving me a lift to uh, Bethlehem again, and it's 50 bucks, so it's a good start for the day. This is a bit like deja vu. Not long ago, I was here at the exact place. I think actually the same taxi. I recognized the guy when I went to Rosendal. So I'm backtracking on my way to Cape Town. 
And here I am again waiting for a taxi. I must wait again until it becomes full, obviously. I'm the first guy, so I might stay in here for a while, who knows? Depends how lucky we are. But this time of day, usually it takes quite a while for the taxi to fill up. But uh, yeah, here we are. So far, so good. Behind me here, there's some guys brying meat, barbecuing meat. It smells delicious. And I need a breakfast, so I'm gonna check it out. Maybe I can get myself a nice breakfast, a meaty breakfast. Still only me, so now it's a waiting game and if you travel like I do, it just takes a lot of time. So 600 kilometers is a very long day of this type of traveling, hitchhiking and taking minibus taxis. I just hope I make it today, otherwise I don't know where I will sleep, but uh, that was definitely the thinnest job piece of meat I've seen in my life. It's like, I mean you can cut something of that piece of meat, <laughs> but it was okay, it tasted okay, the chips was good, the coffee is disgusting. Anyway, I'm a coffee snob, what can I say? It's three hours later and still waiting, but slowly people are coming to the taxi. In my experience, it depends much on the time of day. Around lunch time, just after lunch, people finish their shopping and then taxis start to fill up. But in the morning, usually it's just dead. Pro tip if you travel by African taxi. Okay, this is one of the taxi drivers. I was on his taxi now, but now we change buses. This often happens. It's like you load all your stuff and they say change to the next bus. Sometimes it happens two or three times. What's your name, sir? Isaac. Isaac, why do they like just change the buses like that? Because we don't have a lot of people. Okay. Oh, because we you don't, don't have a, a lot of people. So we have to exchange to other taxis. Because this taxi is taxi from Senegal. So, so it's going to get quicker. Yeah, it's going straight to Senegal. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be quicker. The bus is going, we're on the bus, but it's kind of empty, so this is very unusual. Usually it's full before you drive, but for some reason this one is, well, I would say two thirds empty. Anyway, lucky me. I made it to Senegal, but still a long way to go. So from here, it'll be Bloemfontein, and from Bloemfontein down towards Cape Town until I get to Hanover. So apparently there is a taxi leaving, minibus taxi, in a few minutes, but a few minutes can mean a long time <laughs> in the language of the, the taxi. But uh, otherwise I have to each to get a truck. But uh, yeah, let's see what happens. It's already afternoon. And hopefully I won't get stuck next to the road when the sun sets. Tell me, do you help people get lifts? Yeah, I help people to get lifts. So you organize lifts? I'm, I'm the organizer of lifts. And you get a bit of money from the driver, how does it work? Yeah, I got something from the drivers. Okay, so this guy, if you hitchhike, he helps you to get a lift. I'm waiting in front here for a lift in front of this man's cafe. And he said he, he used to be in Port St. Joe's and I told him I have a vlog about Port St. Joe's and he, he just subscribed and I now finally today have 1000 subscriptions finally yeah what's your name sir thank you what's your name my yes. name is Pablo 
Where are you from? Before I'm you... from Bangladesh. Bangladesh, and you went for St. John's, now you're here in this place. Yeah. Don't you miss Port St. John's? I miss Port St. John's too much. <laughs> Got a lift, stood here for about 15 minutes maybe and that guy got me a lift. Obviously he took a little bit of commission. Uh, for 100 rand to Bloemfontein, this guy's car. It's a Mercedes and uh, yeah, so we're getting there slowly but surely. We're still a long way to go. Thanks guys. It's late afternoon now, the guys dropped me here uh, at the garage next to the N1, a national road in South Africa. And uh, yeah, the sun will set pretty soon, but at least I'm at the safe place. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to sit here in a restaurant, drink a coffee, use my artistic prowess, and make a sign that says where I'm going. And uh, then I'll just go from truck to truck and see. I can get a lift for the last 300 kilometers. I'm about halfway now. So I knew my art portfolio, my art materials would come in handy at some point. Finally, today is the day. Oh, it's the man with the coffee. What's your name? Thank you for bringing me coffee, brother. Thank you very much. Probably not my best work yet, but I think it will do. Been standing here for hours listening to Joe Rogan podcast while I wait. Probably won't get a lift tonight, but uh, this is part of this life. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good, but I'm having a good time just standing around. I had to change positions, the security guard asked me to change positions. I have a new sign, still standing here. Still stand here for a while, and maybe later move to the garage, play some guitar, sit here all night, and continue tomorrow. That's how it goes, man. I've been standing under that street light now for four hours, no lift. Very demoralizing. A few things to be taken from this experience don't hitchhike at night. Nobody wants to pick you up at night. Also, a lot of people tell me, you've got this amazing life, wow. I sit in the office, well, I pay for my life. It's a lot of times things like this happen and it just sucks, it's shit. I'm going to have to sit here overnight, I don't have any place to sleep, I'm just going to sit in a corner here somewhere. And hopefully we'll get to Hanover tomorrow at some point. This vlog is about Hanover, but obviously this is the introduction. This is how I get to Hanover, which is part of the vlogs for now. And yeah, so it's like not all that amazing to go around and vlog about stuff. There's a price to be paid for everything you do in life. I still love this life, this is what I choose, but I pay my price, definitely. And I pay it often, and you don't always see it. But we are on our way to Hanover, and at some point we'll get there, and this vlog will start properly, and it's going to be cool. Fellow traveler there in the back I met earlier. This is why you should never give up your day job. So that's going to be my happy space for the next few hours. I'm not going to lie, it was a pretty shitty night, but 
It's all part of the experience, this travel experience. I love this life. It makes me think of the old the hobo life in the 50s where people traveled over America from job to job. And I met a few guys like this here at the garage, had a conversation. And uh, it's just an interesting way of living. And I'm kind of addicted to this transient way of living, so that's why I do it like this. And uh, yeah, let's see what the day holds. Hopefully I won't stand here too long. We stood next to the road like the whole morning, no lifts, but uh, we organized a ride in a truck, so we, we're doing a truck ride all the way to Hanover, that's what's happening. I just arrived, I made it to Hanover. It was a hard journey. I was afraid for this one and it turned out I was afraid for good reason. I couldn't make it in the day. Uh, couldn't sleep last night really. Mostly stayed awake at the truck stop. Spent hours and hours next to, next to the road, didn't get a lift. Got a lift with this truck, nice guys, they dropped me off. And I made it, I'm so relieved. I'm very, very tired. So I, I think it's late afternoon now. I'm gonna find a place I stay at. And then I'm gonna rest. And tomorrow, I'm gonna start vlogging. But now, it's the first time I'm walking into this town. It looks very small. I've driven past here before in my life. So I'm excited to see what we are going to find because you are going to explore this town with me now. So let's go check out what we find in this town of Hanover. Hanover is a typical Karoo village in the Northern Cape province of South Africa. The region is also known as the Great Karoo. Just stopped here to ask these guys where to get the guest house. And my first impressions are quaint, looks quaint. And it looks like very, very Karoo, it oozes with Karoo and uh, I'm loving this so far already. It's just a quiet, quaint Karoo town, just what I need. A restful break from hard traveling. I'm very excited. It looks like I already have an audience willing to participate in a vlog, that's great. The red sign says Andraf Cafe, which means jog in cafe, so I like it. It's the original name. Look at kids playing in the street. That's a good vibe. The 
area is known for its sheep farming. It has many historic buildings. Everywhere children are playing in the broad streets, which gives it a unique carefree atmosphere. So, first view of Ban Claudi. How do you pronounce it? Ban Claudi. Ban Claudi restaurant. What does yes. Ban Claudi mean? I really don't know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Okay, I'm gonna settle in. I'm dead tired. The real vlogging will start tomorrow, but I made it. I'm glad. Big yay <laughs> for me. I'm in my room. I'm very happy. It looks really neat and cool. Very cool. Even a little fridge, but I'm gonna show you the whole place and the whole room and everything from tomorrow. Today I'm just gonna rest, but yeah, I'm here now and I'm, I like it. I am greeted by the early morning scenes of a typical Karua town after a good night's sleep in a proper bed. I feel refreshed and ready for the day. Early morning in the street, first day in Hanover, first full day. So there's a bit of a bustle, cars driving around, people going to work, preparing to work, shops are starting to open, youth are going to school, walking to school. So let's see what happens today. It should be interesting. I had a very nice rest comfortable bed and a quiet room and a coffee and now I'm doing my job of vlogging about Hanover. Let's see what happens today. busy national road, the N1 of South Africa. The main traffic transport from Cape Town to West Johannesburg. Hanover is just on the side. You have to turn off the road, it doesn't go through the town. So often when you drive past here, yeah, you just pass Hanover. It just looks like a little small sleepy town. I don't know if it is a sleepy town, we'll see. This is more or less halfway to Johannesburg. Okay, mostly you just pass it. I have passed this road myself many times, I've never went into the town. So this is all new to me, which is exciting. There seems to be a lot of road works going around here. So they're upgrading it here. And also, it seems they're still busy building a new truck stop. It is already functioning, but it's still like, it's only dirt and you can still see there's development. There's, there's definitely development in this town. It's beautiful out here, the Garua is silent and quiet. And it's a typical Garua vibe. Excited to do this down. I'm walking in the main street that goes into town, and yesterday I gave you a quick impression about town, my first impressions. So I spent a few hours in it, as opposed to Harry Smith, where everything seems to be falling apart. This town seems neat and it looks like the tar roads are pretty new somebody is putting money in here to develop this town the roads are good it looks neat there's no rubbish lying around looks like people are taking care of this town it's a lot smaller obviously but it's it's nice i like it uh, it's a good impression why can't this not happen in all towns in south africa what is wrong i mean where's the problem you know <laughs> So yeah, this is what a nice typical Karoot town can look like. It's neat, it's quiet, and it's pleasant to be here. I love the city, but there is something about small towns that keep pulling me back into their innocent embrace. As if I'm searching for something I've lost a long time long time ago.
<laughs> so here in town we have the, the ninja of town. This is the martial artist, he's the guy, what's your name sir? Toto. So where you like to use it for self-defense? Self-defense and Anything. So we can hire you as an assassin. Yes, as an assassin, anytime. There's an assassin and the ninja of town. Right. <laughs> It's a very small but busy little shop. People are coming in and out all the time. Probably was a house before, so it's stacked with stuff. It's business as usual on a Saturday morning. I love walking through the streets and just observing the activities of everyday life. It brings me a sense of normalcy and calm. Despite all the drama out there, life just continues as it always has. Maybe because of this I still have to get a decent audio setup and the wind messed up most of my sound this morning. So I'm doing a voiceover here. I'm just speculating that it's easier to get basic services like cash withdrawal and basic goods in small towns with a close proximity to the national road. So a lot of these guys standing around, I'm assuming they're day workers looking for jobs. This was the CBD, the Central Business District of Hanover. So it's small, but eventually you will find anything you need. So everything you need is in town. You can draw cash. So it's all good. I'm just walking through the main town. Every day I will do a little walk, and show you different parts of the town, the streets, the houses, what happens in the streets. And later on, we will go and visit the other side of town and I'll show you that part as well, like I always like to do. May the warm wind of heaven blow softly on this house and may the great spirit bless all who enter here. The museum seems to be somewhat neglected and also closed down. The church in Hanover is the reason why there is a town here. In the early 1800s, late 1700s, farmers started moving in from Eastern Cape, but their closest church and centre of administration was Groverenet, which is about 250 kilometres from here. By Oxwagon, it meant four to six weeks there and back. So six farmers came together and they discussed this issue. They want um, a town and their own church. The current church was built in 1906. All the woodwork inside is uh, English oak. The pulpit was made in England. 
The pews, also English oak, but that was made locally. Um, the organ is a Norman and Beard English Romantic organ, unchanged still. The bellows were just changed with a compressor in later years. The clock and the bell in the tower came from Germany. The bell in the tower does not work with electricity. If you want to ring the bell, you have to use muscle power. The windows is made of rolled glass, also from Germany. Church bell just rang once. What a beautiful church. It's really unexpected. So beautifully designed. And it's so quiet in here. It's a bit windy outside. And it's still inside here. It's just like a little protected universe. And completely quiet. Slightly spooky actually because you can hear creaking noises everywhere. But really a beautiful church. I mean, only to come and see this is all really worth visiting this town. I've been to a few churches in my life, and I'm going to tell you that this one is pretty special. This is Sina, she takes care of the church. Do you clean the church? It's a big church to clean, but it looks good. It always amazes me how every town is completely different. City is not so much because the city is a city. But the towns are so different and this one has such an interesting feeling to it. It's like hard to explain. It's like it feels like it's not so different. It feels like it's a part of Europe, like it could be in Italy, in a small town in Italy. It could be in the scene of a spaghetti western, broad streets, uh, beautiful little houses and buildings. It's almost like it's from another era. When you walk past the main town and come here to the back, and just walking through these uh, streets and looking at these old buildings, well preserved buildings, um, it's just such a almost like a weird out of this world feel, out of the South Africa feel, it's like almost a European small town feel, Greece, Spain, Italy, it's really cool. Foundation for Alcohol Related Research. I should come and work here, they can use me as a guinea pig. It's a bit windy, I hope my vocals, my voice is coming through. The, the locals are very friendly so far, this guy just stopped next to me and he said, hey man, do you know anything about this town? I said, no, he said, if you just walk down the road here, yeah, you'll get to a natural spring and it's just a natural spring where water comes out, he doesn't know if you can drink from the water, I don't know and there's water all over the felt, there's loads of water here, just shallow water and he says it's all from that spring, so it just keeps on overflowing Isn't that amazing, it's like a metaphor for the abundance in like a dry country place because this place feels like abundance to me. It feels it's green, it's beautiful. This I, I just get this good feeling when I walk here. So I don't want to sound corny or anything, but combining with me walking here and seeing the church, and I'm not necessarily a spiritual or a religious person. I say everything is possible, but I have this feeling there's a spirit in this town, which is really cool. I love that. I think this is the fountain, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. This is like a green patch in the fountain, there's this water coming out of the ground, so this must be it. The fountain of abundance. Late afternoon. 
Let's see what this town has to offer on a Friday. How many places do you know in the world or have you been to where you can play soccer? In the main road on a Friday at 5 o'clock, that's the time when it's usually peak hour traffic in cities. I don't know of many. <laughs> All you need is imagination. You don't need computer games or a PlayStation. These guys have got two empty boxes and they're making a game. Imagination. I think the only bar might be the hotel and this hotel is unexpectedly beautiful and classy and cool. It's a really cool hotel. Tell me, uh, what's your name and what are you do where are you from and what are you doing here in this hotel tonight? My name is Peter, I'm from Messina and I'm a farmer. And did you come for a visit in this town? We've been to Cape Town touring, we on our way back home. Apparently since early afternoon, I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> Those people I took this little video off here in the foyer, they from Messina. And I don't know much about that place, but I said come over, come take some video at Messina and I asked is it cold in the winter because I'm when I escape winter they say no it's pretty hot so maybe I'll go to Messina next and thanks guys if you see this thank you for the beer <laughs> Friday night action in the center of town let's see what's going on those guys are still in the corner some more guys over there so I think everything is happening around here eh? I just asked a couple of ladies there if this is the only bar they say there's another bar here in town just on the corner so let's go check out that bar it's probably maybe hopefully the budget bar doesn't look like a bar to me it looks like the bottle store people are just standing in front of the bottle store maybe that qualifies as being a bar in the small towns in the Guru area oh you guys are still here Hey, hey, play a song, play a song. Everybody seems very happy here, but it's only a liquor store in here. I don't see a bar. Apparently, there's a tavern on the other side of town which I might go and check out but these guys are just too drunk and loud now and it's becoming uncomfortable it's not, there's no conversation, it's just shouting so I'd rather leave that for tomorrow night when everybody's got to hang over and they're a bit more mellow you have to be tactical baby
Yeah, they think I'm from overseas. I can't hear them. But everybody's rowdy. They're swearing at me now. They're calling me master post and stuff. So it's very rowdy now. That's why the police is here. The whole town is just hyped up on a Friday. And, uh, yeah. Swearing at the white guy in town. Which is not very friendly from the people from town at all. The hotel security guard is looking nervous, so I think Friday nights here can go wild. So I was misinformed. Apparently there are two more bars. There's the Feathers place which is also a restaurant and a bar area and then there's a place in Darling Street so let's go check that out apparently the other two places is in the same street Darling Street so one is left and one is right so let's go check out both second place that makes pizza in town so three bars two pizza places pizza must be very popular in this town These friendly people I just met, and uh, it's a nice little cozy bar. Playing some it's the 70s music. Yeah. Nice 70s music, and the wine is fully around a glass, which is, I think, it's probably a less cheaper, or cheaper than a hotel. Hotel is expensive. What's it having there? It's good. Cute little bottle. So that uh, portrait of Winston Churchill above the fireplace is actually signed by Winston Churchill. Can you believe that? A huge pizza. Wow. Number 34. <laughs> Sun is almost down, standing under the street light, but that's a really cool little bar. And just to give you an example, because my thing is to give an honest review about places. Beers there, the same beers, 30 Rand, and the hotel is 5, 35 Rand. So yeah, it's a bit out of the way down here, very cute little bar, not as long as the hotel, but a 5 Rand less than the hotel beers, so yeah. Anyway, there's a little place here in these small towns for everybody, you just have to find it. So in the same street, just on the opposite side of the main road, there, way down there, where the neon light is burning, there's a pizza place. I walked past it earlier, it was closed, it only opens at 5, but there's another place you can hang out. So there's a nightlife here. So here I am, the third place you can hang out on a Friday night here. And this is the owner, what is the owner? This is Quirky. So let's test this out. Can I have a, just a normal castle dumpy and uh, what is the price for the castle dumpy? 17. 17. 17. 17. No, it's not good. He says 17 rand for a castle dump. I think he's lying, but it tells 35, the other guy was 30. And I don't think he's telling me the real price, but I just want to tell you that you don't only have to go to the hotel, the other places which have different ranges of alcohol prices. So it's just gauging your alcohol price. But I don't Between 17 and 20. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Awesome. Do you believe it? I don't know. <laughs> so the actual price is 22 Rand, which is a really, really good price. So the best place to come and drink, where I have also pizza, is here at Ferris. Ferris on the wall back here. You pay 30 Rand, then you can write a little message and the Ferris gets placed on the wall. I think that concludes my review of a Friday night in Hanover. So you've got four options. The first is the hotel, which is quite... Actually, you've got five options, if you're brave enough. The first is the hotel, which is quite lawny and very nice. It's a beautiful bar. It can fit into a city like Cape Town, but it's expensive. Okay, that's 35 rand a beer. Just as I'm just using a beer so you can get a scale of things. Now the second place I went to is a small little bar on the side street there. 
which is kind of uh, more like an English vibe. It's Winston Churchill against the wall. Uh, the whole thing looks like a classical English pop type of vibe. Maybe something you'll get in Scotland somewhere. Very cool, nice owners. Very cozy and comfortable, small. So there the beers are fitty around the beers. Okay, first let me tell you, the, my impression about Fedders is it's a bit more like Afrikaner vibe. Uh, more Afrikaner music. Uh, music. Um, it's more, uh, it's family orientated, it's play it is for the kids, so it's a family vibe. Then you have your fourth option. You can go to a tavern. In a township or whatever you want to call it. And I haven't done that review. I might go there tomorrow and insert it here. And then your fourth and final option is to go stand there on the veranda in front of the shop in the center of town. That is your final option, is just to go stand on the stoop. Maybe put some wine in your bag, pretend it's water, have a drink there, <laughs> hang out with the people. So there's something for everybody in this town. And I, I suspect that's that's most of life and most of towns and most of places everywhere in the world. You need the whole spectrum of society to live in a place. And a space will create it to accommodate all of them. Which I found beautiful. I can always say I hang out with everybody, so it's very exciting for me to get to a new place and check out that whole spectrum and hang out with all the people of all the spectrums. I just love it. I love it. And thank you for supporting me. This is the part where I'm quickly thanking everybody that helped me to make this vlog. Without your help, I won't be able to do this. Still not monetized for YouTube, I'm struggling to get stuff for the post, it's not happening. So I'm doing all of this on my own steam and I need support. So if you want to support me, you can support me. I'll be continuing down the coast now, towards the east coast, I think, of South Africa, to make more vlogs. They will be coming up. And also, at the end of this video, you will see a young person, a young man, called Ashwin. I recorded one of his original songs in Hanover. He's very talented. And uh, you can support him because at the moment he doesn't have a guitar. And that guy should have a guitar. And thank you very much. If you subscribed, thank you. If you supported me in any other way, thank you. In the description, you will see ways in which you can support me if you want to see more vlogs like this. Cheers guys. It's a beautiful sunny Saturday morning and we are going to climb a hill or a kopje today. And uh, it's a slight chill in the air. Winter is coming. I would like to escape to a place where winter is not so bad. Um, so I can go to a place to escape winter and do vlogs somewhere. Any ideas, you're welcome to put it in the comments. Um, I also have a little gig here tonight. Show. Um, I do different types of shows. In Aerosmith I did more like covers, cover versions and stuff. Depends on the vibe. I'm going to do a bit more arty stuff here. So I'm going to display my art here at the guest house. Read a few poems. Play a few original songs. Mix it with a few covers. Church bell. Let's wait for the church bell. Oh. Uh, a bit late today. Anyway, what I was saying before we got interrupted, I'm sharing my art as well on this channel because it's part of the things I do as I travel my poetry, my art and stuff like that, my photography and I'm definitely not a traditional artist, I know that I'm not a technical artist, I'm not a pop idol when it comes to singing I do things like I want to do, I just for me it's just about self-expression and uh, I have had a commentary on my music video I released about like okay you can't sing yes well I'm not a I'm not a pop idol singer definitely not uh, I don't do genres I just basically just express myself as authentically and honestly as possible and I'm sharing that as well on this channel but I mean if you're not into my stuff I do you can just skip those videos you don't have to watch them but I'm very proud of what I do and how I express myself and this is a very important part of my life and uh, like 
the show I do tonight is basically poetry readings, maybe some bits out of short stories, uh, original songs and stuff like that. But for me, art is all about just expressing yourself. For me, there's no good or bad or technically this is wrong or that is right. Um, it's just about self-expression and uh, yeah, I'm proud of everything I do. That's why I'm sharing it out there. And I'm not the first person that's a non-singer, so-called non-singer. And person doesn't, that doesn't make these ideal pictures that people want to put up on their walls. Um, I just express myself. And uh, some people will like it, some people won't. It doesn't matter. If it's not for you, it's not for you. But it's a big part of my life and I'm sharing it. So let's continue to the hill we're going to climb. It's very pleasant here in the felt just on the side of the town. And that's something else you can do. You can just come and walk here. And there's a lot of birds, bird sounds. It's really pleasant and very relaxing. I see there are two hills, so I'll have to choose which one I'm going to climb. I think the one of the cross. Hopefully there's a path. green on this part of the hill. I think there's a reservoir on top obviously is. Now water comes down here but it's so green. It's hard to believe that you're in a Karoo. I'm not sure if there's a specific path, I'm just guessing, so hopefully we'll get there. Let me translate without the wind. I don't see a specific path, I'm just guessing. But hopefully I will make it to the top without issues. Windy, so I hope you can hear me. So behind me is this huge pile of rocks. I'm not sure what it signifies, this little plaque here we'll see now. It's a beautiful view all around. You can see the N1, the national road coming from far away. You can see the whole of the town and it's an easy walk. Anybody can do this walk, it's not hard. Very easy. Sacred to the memory of Charles Richard Beer, the first civil commissioner and president magistrate of Hanover, born on the 8th of December 1828, died Hanover on the 9th November 1880 something, I can't see that. That's a very unusual structure, surrounded by electric wire. 
Let's go check that out. Some curious kids looking at the same structure. Apparently these people didn't finish the building and they are actually leaving town. Apparently the tavern I told you about last night is down here, down this road, on the other side of town. We might as well walk down there now and check that side of town out as well. But it's quite far, they say, like three kilometers. But let's go. I find that there is a certain carefree abandon in communities that live without the security of your typical middle-class existence. When you live from hand to mouth, you are forced to accept things as they are and you have to make the best of what you have available. Sometimes giving up control is all you can do. Like a friend of mine used to say, the more shit you have, the more shit you have. Something I'm noticing in this town, there's a lot of children everywhere. And now it's Saturday and they're all playing in the streets. I mean, this is something you only see in this areas of town. You don't see it in the main town. There's everywhere on the streets, in the streets, playing all kinds of games. And uh, yeah, that's black. It's a nice vibe. So I got a lift of the policeman Yeah, He's just making sure I'm safe. He says like the Mamparas don't steal my stuff, so looking after me. This is the tavern. I'm here in the tavern. This guy's in front is worrying me a little bit, but uh, the tavern is closed unfortunately, so I can't show you the tavern. I'm not gonna lie, that was slightly nerve-wracking because the police, before they took me there, I said, I wanna go to the tavern, and he said, be careful of the Mamparas, you know. And I said, well, I can fight, but I can fight against one or two, not against ten like there. So that was pretty nerve-wracking, but I just walked out of there, and I think the fact that the police dropped me off helped me out a little bit, you know. People are naughty everywhere in the world. Things happen. So if you go into these places, this is just a fact uh, of life. If you look like a tourist and you're carrying cameras, you are vulnerable. People are poor and they, they're going to take a chance if they can. You know? Okay. You guys are having a party here. And these guys, they're going to standing all around me, following me. Back in the main part of town and the people are ready to party, it's Saturday. 
I have my show tonight, so I'm just going to go through a few songs and take it easy. Let me give you my little review about the Bon Clody Manor and Guesthouse here in Hanover where I stayed. I'm very thankful. The way I travel now is like I come and vlog in a town and I do a promotional video for a place for accommodation. That's it. So uh, that's how I work. It's the only way at this stage I can do what I do. And uh, I want to do my best to always give an honest review. And my first impressions when I walked in here was it was homely and I felt welcome. But you know, it's a personality thing. I like this type of vibe. It's a kind of old building, old wooden floors, art against the walls. It's not generic, nice old memorabilia and things in the main room. This is my type of vibe and the people are friendly and it feels more like a home. It's not perfect, it's not a five star guest house. So, I mean it's a budget guest house. So, it's like little things, attention to detail maybe, everything is not super, but it's adequate. And uh, the bed is super soft and good and there's enough bedding here. This is a very really good mattress and it's clean. And the room is ample, it's big. With an ensuite bathroom I had here. Table, even a fridge. And coffee. And uh, it's TV. Presented nice. I felt I had a very comfortable stay here. Quiet in the evenings. Air conditioning. And... Uh, it's like in town in the main street, so it's not far from town. I had a good stay. I'm still having a good stay until I leave. And what more can I say? I had a comfortable stay. Pan Clary, thank you. I salute you and good luck. So we had Pan Clary. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, I'm not sure. And uh, I'm just preparing for my little gig. I don't know if anybody will pitch, maybe they will come, maybe not. That's how these things go. I travel from place to place. I do a performance and uh, it will be what it will be. Let's see. Got my art on the table there. Informal exhibition. I'm just going to sit there. And this is the... Two people so far. I'm not a classical singer, I'm not a, uh, what do you call it, a pop idol. I do it my way, I don't follow genres. Uh, I don't pretend to be a great singer, I just do it like I do. And, but I express myself authentically the way I do it, and I hope you like it. And the poem is called The Gentle Fall, and I'm going to read it to you. The Gentle Fall. Your fall from grace will start in that moment when you realize your own existence and one is subtle passing. The birds don't think, they fly without asking how or when or why. Wings are not designed for heavy-headed creatures like ourselves. But we can look up at the sky and imagine noisy vessels which will transport us to foreign places where we can go to observe and remember the gentle fall of others until we ourselves are released from the burden of thought. So I'm going to say, usually I don't explain anything, but I'm going to say something about that. The whole idea is that um, basically our mind goes... <laughs> our mind constructs, the force we develop in our mind uh, makes us unfree. And that is basically my philosophy with my blog, my travels as well. We all develop mind constructs through our lives. But it's not real, it's just constructs in your mind. Like racism or what and all that stuff. And uh, those are the stuff that, that cut your wings. You can't fly anymore. And it's all about being self-conscious. The moment you realize you are here, your fall starts. Because then you start building mind constructs. And that's basically what this is about. And like all oh, good poetry, this song, Beautiful Stranger, is basically concerning the two biggest topics in life. And it's about love and death. It's called Beautiful Stranger. Mm -hmm. 
And maybe I should just put it in the right place. Sunday morning, it's my last day here. Tomorrow I'm heading to, to the next vlog, which will be Cape Town. I have some cool accommodation in Cape Town, which you will see in the next vlog. It's been raining last night and this morning, it's still rainy. Taking a walk through town again, probably my last walk. I also have a musical surprise for you at the end of this vlog. This time it's not my music. It's local talent, so that's another thing that is cool, is discovering talented people in small towns and I saw last night at my gig, this guy played a few songs and he just blew me away, it's so good. Original songs and I'm going to record his favorite and put it at the end of this vlog, but an uh, amazingly talented musician, really cool, coming up. This town is full of these old, well-preserved houses. The woodwork in the ceilings and on the roofs are quite spectacular. It's Sunday, I'm a bit low on booze, and in a lot of small towns you won't get booze on a Sunday, but yeah, it's just big enough that there is a place just on the other side of town, there's blue building, and yeah, you can buy a few beers on a Sunday if you run out of booze. Good to know.
in the next episode.